Hey, what's up YouTube Nation? Today we're working on a 2012 Ford Focus. We've got a power steering problem. This car here has an electric, um, it's an electric rack and pinion down there. There's no videos or anything online about how to replace it that I can find, so I'll make a little video on it. First, get down here and show you what I found. What goes on with these is this, uh, this electric motor right here fails. It's some kind of wiring problem inside there from what I see online. But we're going to have to take this whole subframe off to get this rack and pinion out of here because of how big this unit is. The electric motor, it, it won't fit through either end. So uh, let's get started and see what we can do. As always, whenever you're lifting a car, you know, the first thing is you jack it up and set your jack stands under there and shake the car. Shake the car, make sure it's not going to fall on you. And then we're going to take the tires off. Um, you want to get this car at least two to three feet off the ground because that subframe's going to drop down quite a bit. Okay, now we got the car jacked up on jack stands. The wheel is off. I have to take these three components loose. The tie outer tie rod in, sway bar link, and the lower ball joint. And I'll show you how to do it. Okay, for whatever reason, this uh, sway bar link nut gets jammed up on there. So the engineers have designed a hex bit head in there. And just install your hex bit. I think this is five millimeter. Then you're able to break that nut loose and this will hold the, the bolt from spinning. When removing the outer tie rod end, you know, you remove the the nut. It was I used a 15 millimeter deep socket. Then you're gonna turn the steering wheel, depending on what side you're doing, you're gonna turn the steering wheel where this is all the way farthest out. In this case, I turned the steering wheel all the way to the right. You're going to want to hit it right here with a pretty good size hammer. And this is what I'm going to use. It's about a three and a half pound hammer. You're going to hit it right here and you're going to hit it really hard. Don't ever hit it here. You will damage the threads and ruin the tie rod. And you hit it here and the vibrations of the hitting is going to knock it out. I always tell mechanics that I'm training. I said, don't even hit it here. Hit it through here. And uh, I mean really whack on it. Let me see if I can set this camera up to where... Maybe you can see what I'm doing. Uh, all right, here we go. Let's hit it right here. And it pops out. Now the lower ball joint is just going to be a pinch bolt. I'm sorry, it's so dark. Huh? I guess I should get some light over here. Uh, it's just a pinch bolt. You're going to remove this bolt right here. It looks like about a T55 on one end and maybe... Okay, when you're through disconnecting those three components on this side, of course you do the same thing on the opposite side. And it's the same as if you were pulling an axle. And the next step is to disconnect the steering column from the rack and pinion itself. And you come inside the car on most cars, but on this one in particular, and you disconnect that bolt at that U joint, and uh, that will separate the steering column from the rack and pinion. Now you want to um, secure your steering wheel somehow so it doesn't move around because if you have it off center when you put it back together, that's going to be a problem. And also inside here, um, the wiring that goes to the airbag is on. A component they call like a, I think they call it a clock spring um, deal but it, it can only go so far one way or the other so you want to keep your steering wheel centered and the way I do that I use a bungee cord and I like fasten it to to maybe the seat adjuster down here and then just on the steering wheel up here and that's going to keep the steering wheel from moving around while you do this work all right, the next component to remove is this uh, bar that goes all the way across the entire width of the car. And once again, I apologize, it's so dark. We're, uh, 
we're getting the outer bands from Hurricane Harvey today here in Alabama. It's raining off and on, and uh, on that note, we just want to keep all the people in Texas prayed up. We've got a long road to hold in front of them. So this is going to be a 13 millimeter. Is it 13? Maybe it's 15. Yeah, it's 15. I'd already loosened them up, but we're going to remove this bar, a 15 millimeter socket. Okay, and the next component is going to be this uh, exhaust mounting bracket. It's, uh, it's holding this exhaust pipe here to this frame. Um, I don't know if you can see that so well. And then you're going to come to the front of the frame. I already took the bolt out, sorry, but you're going to take this uh, transmission mount bolt out of here. And then we're going to take these support brackets for the frame, these little triangular support brackets. Got two of them. We're going to go ahead and take those out, and then we're going to put a jack and support it. This is the one of the main bolts. You got four main bolts. You got one, two, and then through the control arm, you'll use an extension and go all the way up to get that bolt up there. Okay, to get to the front frame bolts, you're going to need <coughs> excuse me, you're going to need a pretty long extension. 15 millimeter socket and the impact and you're going to go through this hole on the lower control arm to get to that bolt up there let's see if i can record this i don't know if it's going to record it or not that bolt out I don't know if it got that or not but that's the front bolt and this is the back bolt I better get a jack under here okay before I take out any more frame bolts I guess I probably should have done this step first I totally forgot about it but to unplug the unit this is the wire going into the servo I'm gonna have to remove this heat shield it's held on by a 10 millimeter uh, head bolt there I'm going to remove that. And there are no um, power steering lines on this. It's a total electric unit. So there's not going to be any hydraulic lines to disconnect. There won't be any mess with that. So uh, that's one small convenience. But this is a pain in the butt anyway. I mean, it's not your typical rag and pinion. That's for sure. Okay, let's take that off. All right. Got all the bolts out. I couldn't get the wiring harness unplugged I couldn't see the way the lock was so I disconnected all the little clips so that it'll come down with the unit and I got it uh, sitting on my transmission jack we're just gonna let it down a little bit little bit put it down now slow and easy It's hanging up on this side. Maybe it's hitting the axle right there. Maybe the steering shaft hasn't separated yet. Let me get in there and check it out. Okay, it was some of this wiring harness still attached up there a little bit. So let's continue coming on down. Nice. All righty then. And that dude is out of there. Let's see what these plugs look like. drag it out of here Let's see what it looks like but anyway folks that's how you get this dude out of there and uh you know it's exactly opposite to get it back in okay this is the last step in getting this rack and pinion off i got it all unplugged and i pulled the entire subframe out from under the car i had thought that the 
sway bar that we'd be able just to pull it up and and rotate it out of the way so you can get the tie rod ends through but uh, it won't move it's it's fixed on the rubber grommets I guess so you're gonna have to take the sway bar off and this is a 21 millimeter socket on the nut and a 19 19 on the bolt so uh, I don't know if it's easier to take this off while it's under the car or when it's out uh, I don't think it really matters it doesn't seem that complicated when it's out but I think when it's in the car you'll have a hard time getting to these bolts all right thanks for watching okay YouTube family one more thing on this unit the uh, the new one that I purchased there's the old one over there the new one that I purchased didn't come with this insulator um, I didn't know how to take it off I actually busted this one but it it's got a little lock when you see it's got a little twist lock in there these are the, the locking tabs just goes on drop it down lock it in place all right thanks